So we're going to go through the next 10 steps on FreeCodeCamp's Learn Basic CSS by building a cafe menu. So step 40, as you can see, um, oh no, sorry, we've passed this, so let's go to the next challenge, step 41, that's where we'll be starting. So yeah, so that worked now in that the items are all on the same line, and there's a, but there's still a little space up to the right of the price, as you can see here. Um, so you should try to keep various percentages for the widths, um, yeah, so you could keep trying various percentages for the widths. Instead, use the backspace key on your keyboard to move the P element uh, with the class price next to the P element with the class flavor so that they're on the same line of the editor. Um, make sure there is no space between them. So I think it just means to do that, as you can see here. So let's check our code, and that's good. But as you can see, nothing's changed on the output. So um, Obviously with CSS, it's basically the styles that we apply. So go ahead and change both the flavor and price widths to be 50% again. So let's do 50 and 50. And if you remember, that will drop down, I believe now. Um, okay, maybe not. Let's check that. So now that you know how it works, you can change the remaining article and P elements to match the first set. Start by adding the class item to the other article elements. Um, so I'm not sure actually why that is working in terms of being on the same line here. Uh, let me just see. That is right. Okay, interesting. Uh, I don't often you know, sort of use other CSS methods for um, placement, but that's good to know. It's a good refresher. Uh, but anyway, we need the class of flavor. So let's give that class of flavor to all of the um, items here. Oh, sorry, no, we want to actually do, yeah, item. So let's go back, and we want this class of item to all of the article elements. So it's the opening article tags is where you put the class name. So I'm going to paste that into all of these, and let's check that, and we should be good to go. Cool, so step 44, next position the other P elements to be on the same line with no space between them. Um, so again, I guess we just move them back. What I'm going to do is, there we go, that should do it a little bit easier. And as you can see, actually, these items are now coming right next to each other, um, not having any space between them. That's because they don't have the same class as this French vanilla one. So let's go to step 45. Um, so to complete the styling, add the applicable class names, flavor, and price to all the remaining P elements. So now for the price. Let's just do that like so. And sorry, that is flavor and then price is the same just on the price tag for each of those. And there we go. And as we can see, we've got our um, sort of menu coming together quite nicely now. So that all passes. Cool. So step 46, if you make the width of the page preview smaller, you'll notice that at some point, some of the text on the left starts wrapping around to the next line. This is because you use the width of the P elements on the left side, um, and that can only take up 50% of the space. So if you remember, the sort of the, I guess the break point here is 50%, and then 50% for this side. But if we start, let's say, changing the width, um, because we're still having the divider at 50%, the, the line breaks there effectively. That's what it's called, a line break. Um, so we want the width of the flavor to be 75, and then the remaining percentage, obviously up to that 100% of the parent container, uh, this will be 25%. So now if I do the same, we'll see that line break um, a, a lot further over now because there's basically an extra 25% of room um, or space before that line will break. But it still does break, um, but just further across. So let's check that, and we should be all good. So step 46, you'll come back to styling the menu in a few steps, but for now, go ahead and add a second section element below the first one for displaying desserts offered by the cafe. So this is a another section element, and we'll, we'll do that, there we go. and pop that like so and then we've got our content ready to add in so that all passes 
Um, step 48, add a H2 element to the new section, giving it the text desserts. So I'm just going to grab this for later. H2, we'll close off the H2. Um, we'll, oops, we'll go back to our tab <laughs> and type in desserts there. So let's check our code. And there we go, all passes. Step 49, add an empty article element under the desserts heading, give it a class with the value of item. So I'm gonna give a new article tag like so, and we want to give it a class and then we'll let that equal item like that. So let's check that. And finally, step 50, nest two P elements inside the article element. Um, the first one text should be donut and the second text 1.5, zero, and put both of them on the same line, making sure there's no spaces between them. So I'm actually just gonna grab the ones that we've got up here. I'm just gonna take off the classes for now because they're not needed at this point. Um, it might be, will probably will be different for these articles. Um, so we want donut here as the name of the dessert and the price, will, actually I'll just change this to 1.50 or, yep, yeah, there we go. Cool, so that should pass and go through. And yeah, that'll be all for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.